Hey, Crafty Babes. Welcome to our Crafty Babe Crew exclusive video for February 2022, where we are going to discuss the anatomy of an unpocket page. That's right, kids. We're going to school, so you better get ready to take some notes. The three things we're going to focus on in this session um, are going to be foundation, color, and embellishment. Uh, and I am actually, for the first time in a really long time, I'm going to actually talk through my process in real time as I'm doing it. I am not going to do a voiceover um, like I normally would where I'm doing a process and then just, you know, talking over it. So I'm hoping that that will give you a little bit more of a peek into like why I do what I do um, when I make these pages and kind of how I start uh, the next few steps and how I kind of finish everything off. So I am so glad you're here. Uh, thank you for being part of this crafty babe crew. And, um, let's actually get started. We are going to use issue number 22 printables because in, in the group, you guys were pretty even about wanting to see the issue print issue number 22 printables being used in a process and this topic, the anatomy of an unpocket page. So I'm going to combine the two and we are going to make a, we'll see what we make, but we're going to make an unpocket page together. So grab your supplies and I hope you join me. Okay, let's get started. I have selected a few cards and some photos because I, I, I kind of need needed to have a base so that I knew what all the supplies it was that I needed to bring out. So please don't think that I just left you in the dust um, by picking out some cards beforehand, but it is one of those things I just, I definitely needed to do before we got started. I need a little pre-planning, okay? <laughs> okay, so we are going to be working in um, I can't decide if I want to work in this book or my fringe. I think actually I want to work in my fringe. Um, because I haven't started anything in 2022 for my, my fringe notebook. And, um, I've already got several pages in here and I'm keeping, I'm keeping my, uh, JM planning. This is, a um, this is from Joanne McCabe. You can't see any of the older cover, but this is her uh, notebook that is the same size as the storyline chapters, but friends, the paper, the paper is so much better in my opinion and easier to work with because it is just blank white. It doesn't have the linen. You're not, you don't have dots or grids or whatever other papers come in the storyline chapters. And I just covered it. But I'm keeping this one as like some chronological type of stories, whereas the fringe notebook is going to be things that are not chronological, that are just kind of random stories. So we're going to put that aside and we're going to work in the fringe notebook. And I'm going to skip a few of the front pages because I will want to do like a 2022 page here. And then I want to probably glue a page together so that they're a little bit more solid, which is something I do a lot. And if I end up not doing that many pages in the beginning, I'll just tear a page out. So anyway, here we are with one open spread. Um, what I like to do with these to start is actually bring some of the paper from the back so that it's kind of even. If it's like too high on one side, I get a little like, I don't like it. <laughs> It's just weird. Okay, so here are some of the, the cards we're going to audition because we need to start with a foundation. I talked about how we are going to talk. We're probably going to talk a lot about foundation because there is a bit of a method to my madness as far as how I start and give myself a base for a project like this, for a page like this. It's not a big project. This is something so simple that, um, really is just pretty cookie cutter. 
And once you have the foundation, then after that, it's just a lot of your own creativity, putting things where they feel good. So we're going to talk about that, but let's start with the foundation. So I've decided that I want to do a two page spread. So I know that I need eight elements. Um, I picked four photos and these are going to be, um, different photos from different times that all kind of represent like either discovering something new, being a beginner, um, just unlocking things, positive statements. So it's kind of a mishmash of stories. Um, so that's why I wanted to bring out just a few different cards. I didn't want to decide on the cards just yet because part of the auditioning process is, you know, interviewing them. So I usually just start by kind of laying the photos out in, um, an opposite. I don't know. I guess you call this a, a zigzag or something. I just do them all opposites because, um, well, that feels balanced to me. <laughs> Some of these um, things I'm not going to have answers for you as far as like why I do things, but I will, I will definitely try my hardest to like give you some background or information on my thought process behind things. Um, so I'm going to lay these out and what I'm looking for is, um, framing of the photos, what's in the photos and color of the photos. So what I have here is, um, a shot that's looking down of my lap and my workspace on my recliner. And what it has is a lot of negative space. So all of this right here is negative space and the focus is just right in the middle. So the frame, the framing doesn't, um, take up the whole entire photo, like this one, like this photo, the whole frame is basically the subject. Okay. So here it's the same as this one. And here it's the same as this one. So what I would probably do, actually, I kind of laid them out the way that I, I would is that I wouldn't put these two next to each other or in a close proximity because then that feels very heavy and this feels very light. So that's kind of how I start with my foundation is by looking at what is filling the frame. Um, and now the fact that these two are both on the bottom doesn't bother me because there's space between them. When they're like this, you almost feel like they're neighbors. When they're like this, they're just kind of like maybe in the same neighborhood, but not next door. <laughs> if that is a weird analogy, but I think it works. Okay. So now I'm going to just kind of start placing these things where I think that they might live. Um, and I'm looking here for ways to spread color out. So what I would not do is put this here and I bet everybody can guess why I would not put this here. There's already pink here and there's already pink here. So I'll probably start by putting this one here. There's blue and I really want to use this beginner one, but I also want it to kind of tie into this photo. And if you see what this photo is, I am driving a forklift people. I am legit driving a forklift. Um, long story. Um, I will make it very short, but we, um, had to take pallets off of a gigantic semi truck and the, the company who let us use the forklift just left it with us and only gave us like one minor instruction. And I kind of just like jumped on it and was like, I will do it. And I love doing things like that. And I had a process and I got all 20 pallets off of that truck and stacked up where they needed to go. And I was pretty darn proud of myself. So, um, another one that I picked is this one. Now this is kind of a secondary card that I might want to use this. These, this does have a little tiny bit of orange in it. So that's why I pulled this one because it has the pinks and the blues and a little bit of orange. So I'm going to put that here just to see how it feels because it's far enough away from that orange that it's, it's not bugging me. And now I really want, um, okay. Here's another thing I want to talk about. Here are like the, the three or four things that I really want to make sure I put down on the page is I want to make sure I have a, a card. That's a pattern. I want to make sure that there's a card I can journal on. And I want to make sure there's a card that's a big focus, which would be this one. And then after that, I can kind of play with either another pattern or something kind of plain that I can build up and like design my own card. So for me, this one kind of, um, is like the same as this one, 
And I also feel like this one doesn't really say anything specific about any of these photos. Um, it might go well with this photo of me flexing like after a workout, but I'm not a hundred percent sure that I want to use it in this situation. So I'm going to audition. I'm going to keep it here and I'm just going to kind of step away. I'm not going to step away, but I'm kind of just going to look at it and see if there's anything else that, that I want to adjust. I don't actually mind this pink being here because it feels a little bit lighter when it's got the, the white squares for journaling. It doesn't feel, see, it feels very different than that. Don't you think, don't you think that that feels a little bit too heavy? Um, because there's just too much of the similar pink. And then it's a little bit too light over here because my shirt is white. These journal lines are white and this text is white. There's just a little too much light going on. So to balance the contrast, I think this is a better solution. But what if I did put these two together here and had this orange be here, but I don't really like that because again, too much pink over here. So I am going to stick with this now. The other thing is, do I like these two patterns or do I want to try to put this um, discover card here? I don't think I need more room for journaling because I think what I'm going to do with the journal card is kind of list out the things that I've done here. Um, so yeah, I don't think I need this. So I don't think I need this either. So this is basically how I get to my foundation. Um, it's a very simple formula. It's not complicated at all. It doesn't even require math, you know? I mean, it's really just about color and balance. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna talk about, we've already talked a little bit about color in the foundation, but now we're gonna talk about color when it comes to embellishing. So the next topic is color, um, but the topic after that is also embellishing. So those, kind, those two things really work hand in hand. So we're gonna go over some ways that I kind of start deciding which embellishments I'm going to use. Um, and again, we're using everything from issue number 22. So we have a, a variety of things we can pull from. We have washies and we have labels and we have more patterned papers. If we needed to cut something out, I probably won't because I've got a ton of die cuts. Um, I've already, I've printed several, this I've printed my kit, my, my printable several times. <laughs> Um, so I have a lot of duplicates and then I also have some things that I've used multiple times that I don't have anymore. Like I really thought that it would be fun to use the, I'm doing whatever I want now, um, card, but I have used that already in two layouts. So I figure, I figure I'd give that a rest. Um, but I do, I don't know that I necessarily want to focus and pull out any of the oranges, um, I think the key is enough. So I think I want to stay away from orange supplies or orange embellishments. So I'm going to just dig through. I think I have, um, I still have a lot of the hearts. Okay. And I kind of, that kind of mutes the oranges a little bit. So that's good. Um, what else do I have? I feel like I've used everything at least once. So I'm trying to think of things that might be stuff I haven't already used, but, and I don't have any red on this layout. So I'm going to stay away from red. I'm really going to focus on the pink and the blue. So I'm going to pull out another couple of hearts here. And then I think I'm going to be done pulling from, um, actually I kind of, do I already have, I thought I had still another file folder card, but I think I may have used it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Okay, no problem. So I like this file folder here because it pulls in the, the deep pink and then let me pull out that tab as well. We're going to go real basic here with just 
the basics. Okay, I don't wanna overcomplicate things because I really want this to be naturally how I would create a page. Um, this, this right here looks like a great page or a great card to like build up some like a die cut cluster here. So let's just keep that there and kind of remember that. Um, here seems like maybe a good place for um, a couple of layered labels and then maybe we can stamp on them. Um, so I kind of like this potential unlocked one and um, I'm new here. That's a really great, that's a really great one. Um, oh, maybe what we'll do, hold on, let me see if I can get these to all match up. So what if I did, I'm new here on the forklift picture, potential unlocked on my workout photo right there on the white. Um, Oh, I like this. Okay, evidence of a good life. I like this one right here. I feel like that might be a little too busy. I might end up not stamping on this one. Um, maybe if I do stamp on that one, I'll just do a couple of these. Um, I don't know, then I feel like there's too much going on. Let me just place these here. Sometimes I like to just place them down and just kind of see how I like them. And then he, this is a great spot right here for another stamp. What if I did... not trying to figure it all out. I like that one. I kind of like it right there. That looks good. So that way there's consistency. Um, and I don't always choose my stamps first, but a lot of times they, they do drive what I choose. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I will probably, if I do stamp the sparkles here, I'll probably end up stamping the larger one as well. We'll just, we'll see how it goes. But sometimes I just like to kind of put them here and just feel them out <laughs> while we're, while we're choosing some other things. Um, and that way I know now maybe this is not going to get stamped on, or maybe what we can do is create some of these seals, um, on cardstock, and then we can punch them out with circles, um, and maybe layer them a little bit. We might be able to do that. So that's pretty cool. We could do that. Okay, let's actually, I don't want to stamp just yet. So I'm going to cut out a couple of these labels. And I think I'd like to do a light pink and a light blue because we've got the light blue and we've got the dark pink. So light pink and light blue. It's actually so weird crafting and scrapbooking without music. Um, it is like I have to have music on, but I think because I'm talking, I, I feel like I'm um, kind of in the zone like I would be if I was listening to music. And I would love to know, you guys leave a comment below and tell me what kind of music you're loving right now. Um, for me, I am kind of obsessed with the new Lumineers album. I've always been a big fan of them as far as like new music goes. Um, and they just came out with a new album and it only has like seven or eight songs. So it's only like 30 minutes long. And I've basically just been listening to it on repeat because I'll listen, I'll get all the way through. And then I'm like, oh, I want it, I want more of that. So I just put it on again. Okay. Oops. A little, little wonky there. Oh, the little teeny tiny part's going to bug me, but we got it. We got it girls. Okay. Just kind of placing them there. Let's just see how that goes. And then what if we did a dark blue label over here and kind of, you know what I didn't do, which I've, I've been meaning to do is to print the labels two up, which would make them all half size. Um, that's probably something I should, um, show you guys how to do if you're curious. 
I might add that to my list of little, little videos I can do for you guys. Okay, I am gonna cut out, I actually, let me, I'm gonna try something. And the reason why I'm gonna do this, um, gosh, I, it's so weird to like talk through my <laughs> process. Um, I am thinking that maybe this would look even cooler if the labels were the different shape. So I'm going to swap that light pink out for one of the round corners. Um, so printing the labels to up that basically you would, um, I don't know, I guess the proper way to say it is, um, in your settings, some printers will allow you to print two of the same page side by side. And it basically turns the, um, for example, it would turn the page this way and then it would print one set of labels here and one set of labels here and it just shrinks them. So I did mean to do that and then I just totally, totally forgot. Um, and I also forgot that we have, um, a few, I still have a few more of these uh, ephemera pieces that I haven't used yet. So maybe this blue key will be fun. Um, okay, let me think about this as well. See, I get like a little squirrel brain sometimes during this process, but it's okay because when I see something, I want to kind of act on it and just kind of go with what I think my brain is kind of telling me to do. Um, and then I audition it and then we see how it goes. So what I wanted to do was a dark blue label on this side, but since we already had two of the square ones or the beveled, the beveled labels, I wanted to switch it up. So now I'm cutting up the dark blue beveled and let's just see how, let's see how it looks. Okay. And I think I would like maybe layer it to the, since that one's kind of off, maybe go this way, or maybe I, tr you know, maybe it gets trimmed on the edge of that, or maybe it sits in the middle. I don't want this in the middle because it's weird. It like takes up the exact same amount of width. I like to maybe, that's what's so cool about unpocket pages is that you're not confined to that three by four space. You're kind of given a little bit extra wiggle room, which I really like to use. I like to hang things off the edge. Like I wouldn't cut this at the edge of the card. I would cut it at the edge of the page. Um, little things like that just are just make it a slight bit different than what you would, you know, see in a pocket page. So here, if I layered this pink one right on top, then I could fussy cut this and I, ow, I just totally stabbed myself with my own scissors. I think I'm going to leave a little bit of a white border around this one. And the reason is because it might help it pop off of the pink label and the pink background. And I could also use like a foam adhesive to give it a little bit of dimension and let it pop up off the page a slight bit. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to go, trying to go fast with my fussy cutting. Okay. So maybe just sit it right here so that it goes right there on top and covers up the top of that label, or maybe these get tilted a little bit and this goes this way. I don't know, let's audition that for a little while. Okay, and and I, I kind of do jump from thing to thing. I don't work on one um, card at a time unless I am ready to adhere things. So for me, I'm, I'm still auditioning everything. I'm still in that process of deciding what's going to go where. So I'm not making any um, solid decisions just yet. 
I don't want another pattern over here, but I am thinking that maybe a heart could go over here. And clearly I printed these with different printer settings because these blues are different. Um, and that's irritating. But I could do this orange because it's not super solid. It's got that pattern in it, which gives it a little bit of a lighter feel. And then it does go with the oranges that are there, even though I was kind of trying to camouflage them a little bit. But let's just see. Let's just see how it works. And I'm going to give this one a little bit of a border as well. I kind of like doing that lately. I used to, um, when, you know, before printables were a major part of my life, if die cuts or stickers came with white borders, I would actually trim the borders off because it, it bugged me. I didn't like the way that it looked, but our styles change and the things that we find attractive change on our pages. And so I have learned to love the good white border because look, it, it just makes it pop. I mean, how simple is that? It, it This is not rocket science. I mean, this is clearly cooler than rocket science. <laughs> it really isn't. But I like to think that we're cool. And I'm wondering if there's anything else I might want to use. Is there any other little statement or anything that I want to pop somewhere? Um, I kind of like be brave enough to fail at something new, but where would I put something that's that much orange? I don't, I don't know that I would love it over here, but now I feel like maybe I need a bit of an orange label situation going on over here or this orange key, because now it feels like I have intentionally put orange over here and you're not really, you're not really getting it from the photo. So let's just try it. Let's try it and see. Okay. More fussy cutting y'all. I hope you guys are liking this format. I really don't know how long this is going to be either. And I had to wait till my house was quiet. Um, Cause usually if I am just going to do a voiceover, I will edit the video with the, you know, speed with the speed that I want. And then I take my microphone and my computer into my closet and I record my voiceover in the closet. So it doesn't matter what's happening anywhere else in the house. <laughs> but when I'm doing this live, like, you know, in real time, um, I kind of just have to make sure that the family is put away doing their own things. So thankfully that this is a good time for that. So let's exchange. That actually doesn't feel bad. I dig that. How are we feeling? What if we did both? Like what's, I don't know. Oh, I don't, Ooh, I don't know. I kind of like that. Cause it's also, we've also got the keys on both sides. I'm giving this a thumbs up for right now. I think we are, I think I'm loving this right now. Okay. Now I know we said we, we might want to make some of these seals and I think it would actually be really fun to put one right here because we have four things and I like to have an odd number of things. So, and I feel like there's just this little empty space right here and we have this whole card at our disposal. This is all our, our space. We get to do whatever we want here. So let's see which one I like. I've already used good job me and I've already used beginner. So I kind of like this, the more, you know, because I don't know. It just feels like it's the one that's most relevant, which I have a hard time being a non literal scrapbooker. Um, I kind of just can't use, um, imagery that, and words that don't really fit what I'm trying to say. And so for me, um, I try to find the things that are most relevant. Um, and that also kind of leads into the supplies that I buy for myself. I typically don't buy a lot of themed, uh, supplies. Like you're not going to find me, um, seeking out 
Um, I always use like a llama as an example because llamas were so big for such a long time in scrapbook products and collections that I'm like, the only time you would ever find a llama embellishment on my page is if there's a literal photo of me with a llama or a photo of a llama. Like there's no way I'm ever going to put a llama on my page just because it's like in this collection. So that's kind of where I go. Um, when I'm choosing supplies is that I make sure that they, that they help me tell the story because otherwise then I have to use my own words and I don't always love doing that. So, okay. I think the color we're going to pick for this is going to be the faded jeans because that is the distress oxide color that most closely matches the dark blue. It is not an exact match but it is of the ones I have, it's the closest. Um, the other one that came in kind of second is stormy sky, but stormy sky has a little bit too much purple. And this blue has a little bit, it's not really purplish at all. So, okay, let's grab some supplies. And I think I've got enough of a little scrap piece of paper right here. So let's do this one. And make sure it's funked up. <laughs> I don't think I've used this one before, which is why I'm um, kind of giving it a little bit of a rub. Um, in case you're not aware, stamp manufacturers have kind of a, like a coating that goes onto a finished stamp. And so uh, the impression of the stamp is, um, highly improved. If you've, you don't have to rub it as much as I did. I was kind of just illustrating it. Um, the stamp impression that you get is much improved. If you kind of rub off that film, it's not really a film. It's not like something you, you peel off, but you can almost, um, I usually like to just rub it on the backside of my hand because there's going to be some natural, like skin grease. I know it's really gross, but trust me on this. They also do make erasers, but I'm not like, the kind of person that always needs to have a tool that is just kind of like a sole purpose tool. Um, so I just like to use the back of my hand and then you do get a better impression. Now I don't really like how that one came out. There's a W missing. It's kind of wonky. So I'm going to just stamp another one. And what I love about the distress oxides is that you have a lot of time. Um, you don't have to rush into the impression like you do, um, with the stays on. And I don't, I don't mind that the, the more is a little bit darker. It's fine. It's just the, because a little bit more ink got up there on that end. So I'm good with that. I think I need to go around to the other side of my desk and grab my stamp or my, um, circle punch. But I think because I'm connected to a microphone, I think I'm just gonna do a quick fussy cut of this one and we'll just call it good. I'll do my very best. Um, it's, it's a weird, um, it's not weird. It's cool that some people really enjoy fussy cutting and other people like it is the bane of their existence. And for those people, I hope that they have the patience to, to, um, use a digital die cutting machine, <laughs> because if you don't like to fussy cut, you definitely need to figure out a silhouette or a cricket situation. But for me, I had a silhouette for a really long time and I did love it and I did use it a lot. But, um, I kind of just got to the point where I was just not enjoying the process of setting up all the pages. Every time I wanted to, to print out things, I, f I just found that it's a lot easier for me to, um, just print and cut as I go. Sometimes I'll pre-cut things, but for the most part, like I just keep a little, file folder like this, especially for the magazine printables. And then otherwise I, um, 
just keep them in like a little organizer on my desk with uh, current um, pages that I'm, or current, you know, um, digital pages that I've printed out. So that seems to work for me. At the moment, it works for me. <laughs> okay, let's keep that there for now. I want to just kind of take another peek at this and see how we're looking. Let's see. I think it's feeling good. It feels balanced. I like the little stamp situations. I like that there's enough space on each photo to do a nice good stamp. And I think actually I might stamp in the blue. I don't, I don't really like doing that. Um, I don't like stamping on photos in color. I really like to stick with the stays on, but I use a matte um, photo paper. So if you were using a glossy photo paper, I would definitely say don't use anything other than a stays on because it's so dry. It won't slide on your picture. But since I use a matte finish, I wonder if using a color would actually still be okay. Um, we will give it a shot. We're going to all do that and that'll be fun. Um, I think I like it. I don't think there's really anything that needs to be changed. I think this is a really good, fun, easy way to get this stuff down. So let's actually, um, let's start it. What the next thing that I do is I adhere the embellishments to the cards and then I adhere the cards to the page and then I stamp. So I'm going to take the stamps off and I will remember which ones I was going to use. I might actually add those sparkles to each stamp as well. So we'll see how the, the spacing works out. Um, okay. I need my tape printer. So for these, let's see, I'll move some of this stuff out of the way, just a smidge. So I have some room. There we go. Okay. I do kind of like them a little bit t tilted. That's fine by me. And I don't want to use a staple because I feel like it might be a little bit too busy with everything that we've got going on. So I'm just going to adhere them down. A little tilt there. And this one will be straighter. and in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So then we did orange and blue and they kind of overlapped. This is, this is always the part that's like, okay, everything looks good. And you start to glue things down and, um, you forget like your exact placement. And I am having so many frustrating issues with my tape runner lately. I was always a glue stick girl, but I do like the, the quickness of using a, uh, a tape runner. But for this last cup, these last couple of rolls that I've, that I've had, they, um, They've been like, they don't end the strip cleanly. And then it makes a big stringy, gummy, messy situation inside. And then it doesn't start correctly again. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like girls that use tape runners know what I'm talking about. And yes, I do use my tape runner right on the surface of my desk. And then I just kind of rub off the, <laughs> the excess glue. And we're going to have it hang down just a smidge. Actually, this one should have been a little higher. Let me see if I have, oh good. I can adjust it. Yeah, that feels a little bit better. Okay. I like that. And now let's use some foam tape for this guy. 
Oh, and look at that. I have the perfect little leftover square. How perfect is that? All right, get that nestled right there. And look how perfect that is. You gotta look for little opportunities to cluster things. It's like you're looking for the space that something would fit in there. I would never put another label there. Or I would never, a heart could go there because it's got like that nice curve. Um, but you have to kind of just look for ways to utilize the space that's available. Okay. I love that. Then we're just going to actually, I would love to staple this one because I love a good staple in the middle of a heart. So cute. And I'm going to move it down just a little bit so that it's not really competing with the file tab thing up there. That's really cute. Okay. Easy breezy y'all. Easy breezy. And let's have some fun and do two staples. And then, yeah, I like it kind of hanging off the side there because why not? Um, I'm going to use score tape for this one because of the staples. It just adheres much better when you've got a little bit of bulk underneath. All right, we'll have it hang off the edge just a smidge. And I will not trim, I won't trim that because no, then it will look funky. Okay, um, we're gonna glue them all except for the good job me because I'm gonna wanna write on that and it's gonna be hard for me to write up against it because I'm right-handed. So I think Oh, listen. Okay, now that's the end. I get that. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I don't know if you could hear that car. I love old cars, and I love loud cars, and I love muscle cars. What I don't love is the fact that they are loud in my neighborhood all the time. <laughs> we must live in a neighborhood that just has the loudest cars, I swear. Okay, let me get a replacement for my tape runner. I need me some country living, y'all. Okay. And when I, um, when I cut things, not everything always gets cut at exactly the same three by four ratio. And so when I'm aligning these cards up, I'm actually lining up the center points and not the outer edge points. So let me, let me show you what I mean. And also I just needed to trim a little bit of this gray line out of here. So if you look, I'll see if I can zoom in when I'm editing. If you look here, this card is slightly longer than this photo. So instead of lining it up at the bottom, then you've got this weird, awkward um, situation in the middle. I'm going to line it up with the middle. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this axis as well. So we will get these down. Stupid gummy situation. <laughs> I'm trying to like figure out how to take the, um, the tape runner and like how to easily take it up off of the page so that it doesn't create that gummy situation. Okay. Now we're going to take these. So it's like, I got to pull it toward me instead of pulling it out in the direction that it just came from. These are like the silliest little things about being a crafter. Okay. So here I'm going to try to line it up again with where we are in the center. And I try to keep 
a similar amount of space in between all four points. So then here, since I didn't get to line this one up, I'm just going to fudge it a smidge so I can see kind of what I'm working with here. And you see how this beginner card is a little bit wider than the photo, so I'm going to make sure I'm lining it up in the center. This one can get glued now. I'm not going to glue that edge because I'm going to trim that off, aren't I? Okay. And now, you know, I could have come in here and trimmed these cards slightly, but this does not bother me as long as the, the middle sections feel similar because really you're not looking on the outside a ton. And a lot of times what I'm going to do is maybe add some things up here that, that might camouflage that anyway. Um, but when I'm working in the fringe, notebook, I usually leave the top open um, for no other reason other than that just gives me um, an opportunity to decorate up here if I wanted to. And if not, then it still feels like this is just the page and you kind of ignore this extra little inch or two, or I don't know, it's like an inch and a half, maybe. I don't know. But so that's just that's just how I work it out. Now, if there's things that like, if there's things like that, that would bother you, then please feel free to like, make sure that everything is lined up properly. But as type A and perfectionist as I can be, those kinds of things, I let those go. Um, but that is not how everybody deals with things. So I just want to, you know, make sure you have as much freedom as you need in a project like this. So um, I'm going to do just a little bit of like bullets. Um, so like I, I will basically start with one, two, three, four like this. So I'll probably just make a box with a check mark or maybe, um, maybe I will use the sparkle cause if it might be big enough. I don't know. It's a little too big for this space. It feels like it's, well, I don't know. No, that actually is kind of cool. Okay. So let me figure out here what I want to say. So here I would probably say, I think at this, I was, um, working on my weekly task list and getting some goals and tasks associated with those things written down. So I think I would say something like, um, it's so hard to think on the spot. I feel like everybody is staring at me. I have such stage fright and I'm never good at these kinds of things, um, on the spot. So let me try to pretend like no one's here and like, it's just me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I like that for the one and then I'll do the next one down here. And this is just a little visual for me so I can kind of have an, a, an idea of how much room I have. Now I know I've got four pictures and I only have six, seven lines. So, um, I'll probably this one here. Um, I was being a rebel and I was wearing gold and silver together. So I think I'll do, um, And that weight only takes up one line. And then I have another opportunity here to either use one line or I can use two lines for each of the next ones. Um, and actually now that I'm looking at this, I could have easily, Oh, you know what I can do? I can white this out and then I can have a space in between each one. So I'll have one, two, three, four, and then that'll feel 
You can't even see that. It's fine. Whatever. I like that better anyway. Okay. So then on the opposite one, oh wait, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like miscounting myself over here. Okay. And I'm going to have a little fun with this one. And, um, okay, so now we can, I'm going to glue this down because I'll have enough room to stamp on this one. All right. We are close girls. We are so close. This is, this is another one of my favorite parts is just finalizing all the little stamping elements. So I think I am going to stamp on the photos in black but I'm going to stamp the sparkle in blue. I feel like if I were to do black here, then it wouldn't tie any of that blue in. And then if I did blue on all of these, it would feel like too much blue. So just a little bit of a compromise that we're going to do there. No big deal. It'll all work out. Okay. Let's do, um, one, that looks nice. Two, three, four. Okay. The spacing is off on some of those words, but again, these are just things you deal with when you, when you go with the flow, you cannot plan everything on a layout. I think actually I want to use the sparkle cluster and what if I did an orange and a pink, mm. <laughs> girls, what pink did we use? Ugh. what pink did we use? I think I have to go look on Instagram real quick and look at my, um, and look at my colors. <laughs> Cause I forgot what pinks we used for this issue. And of course I'm recording with my phone, so I cannot go look at my camera roll. All right. Spun sugar and Victorian velvet. So Victorian velvet is like the deeper pink. I think that's the one I'm going to want to use here. And actually, what if we use the Victorian or Victorian pink, Victorian velvet? What if I used that as the stamping on the photos, actually? And I'm going to stagger these a little bit. Like I'm going to do one over here and one on the outside. One, I think I'll just alternate, but I might do like down a little bit further and then like down here. So that looks good. That feels good. It's a little messy. Sometimes I can go way overboard with the stamping. And so I need to know how to rein it in. Um, so we're going to put these two away and we're going to do stays on. And let's, let's start with this one down here potential unlocked because this was a week that I increased some weights and I was feeling it really was. And I like the placement where it's like on my shirt and on the wall. It just has a little bit more interest than it just being like right in the middle of my shirt or in the middle of the subject. When you kind of overlap, it adds a little bit of interest. So Okay, we got that one down. And the next one is I'm new here because clearly very new. I had a process down and everything. I was working my little tail off and it was quite the workout because this little forklift was 
old. And so it was very hard to steer and you have to like move the gears every single time you do anything like lifting the thing up, moving the forks, um, going forwards, going backwards. So it was a bit of a workout. I was feeling it for sure. That's nice. Um, okay, the last one is going to be a couple of the sparkles down here. So I'm going to load up both sparkles. That way I can just flip the stamp pad over. So I kind of like that little one there and then the big one. I feel like, you know what, that's going to be too much. You can't really see that anyway. There's too much going on already. Um, I'm not going to add any more. Plus, when you look at it, it's going to be all these sparkles, like straight down. I do not want that at all. If I would have seen that before, I would have opted out of doing this sparkle right here. So what I might do is... It's already so busy. I don't want to add to it. Um, so I think I might just leave that. I think I'll just leave it because it's a stamp. It goes along with these things that it doesn't, it doesn't bug me. Um, so for here to finish things off, I will trim that. I think I'd like to add the date somewhere. I don't like to use that where it says date. I do like to typically cover those up, but I feel like what we did was already um, pretty busy. I would sometimes add like a little label, but we've got so many labels going on already. Um, and if I wanted to venture out and use some non-magazine stuff, I could, but... Um, I just want it to be pretty basic. So I'm not going to do anything like that. I think I might, um, I think I might put the date here, maybe here. And really, I just want to do January, 2022. So what if, oh, well, what if we did this? What if we use the 22 from the stamp? Does that feel too busy up here? And if we did like a small, um, just a very basic January, like, like this January, or like that one. So that it's, we've got like a serif and a scripty. And what if actually we did it over here because it doesn't feel as busy over here. Oh, wait, hold, what if we did this? Does that look weird? That's too big. Yeah, that's, it's too overwhelming. Let's just do this little... January. And we're going to do these in two colors. So we'll probably do, we'll do the blue and the pink. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'd like the 2022 to be the lighter color. So I, I don't know. Now I feel like there's too much blue and pink stamping right there. What if I used spun sugar instead? It wouldn't feel so overwhelming and then it will tie into these lighter pinks as well okay let's roll with that so we'll do 2022 in the spun sugar just a good rock and roll there okay perfect and then we'll do the small January right on the top of it. Not over top, I did think about that, but I think 
that if I really wanted to do an over the top of it, I would have done a mask, but the sizes of them are a little bit too similar. So doing a mask would be a little bit difficult. So I'm just gonna go right on top there, and kind of right in between some of the ascenders. There we go. And it doesn't feel overwhelming with that um, because we've got a dark blue over here and a dark blue down here. I do feel like we're missing a little bit of dark blue down here. I wonder if, if it would feel okay to put a couple of those sparkles just like boop, boop. Like, I feel like if I do that, I'm going to regret it. But it does feel like this is missing some blue. So we're going to go for it, you guys. I think I'm just going to do the little cluster and I might do two of them. Okay, I hope I don't regret this, but I need to do it less so that it's not directly across from this one. So I think I'll do like a, like a boop here and like another, actually I'll use the big one now. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to look at things and see how they feel before you commit. Like, they, like that's all that we've ever done here is like, trying things out there that looks good okay that doesn't bug me at all all right oh my gosh okay girls I think we're done I think we're done I think we did such a good job I have no idea if you guys created along with me or are just going to use this as a tool for the next time you want to create an unpocket page, but I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it and I cannot wait to see what you make, um, in your next, uh, project with the printables. Please be sharing them in the group. I love to see what you guys are making with the printables. I would love to see if you guys are making the pocket unpocket pages or any kinds of layouts using the printables, please. If you're posting on Instagram, tag me. I love to see them. Um, and I will talk to you guys soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye.